Hello, and welcome to this instructional video. Today, we will demonstrate the procedure of inserting, maintaining, and removal of a urinary catheter. For more information, like indications and contraindications, equipment or positioning, please refer to the nursing procedure 10.5, urinary catheterization, found in the nursing manual of procedures. So, let's talk about how to prepare for a urinary catheter insertion as there are a few key steps before we begin gathering our equipment. Before we go in to meet our patient, we must perform hand hygiene, preferably using alcohol-based hand rub, or if our hands are visibly soiled, using soap and water. When we go to the patient's bedside, it is important to first confirm their identity. Then, we should explain the procedure to the patient or caregiver in their preferred language. This gives the patient or caregiver an opportunity to discuss the patient's previous medical history and ensures that they can ask questions or voice any concerns. Once verbal consent is obtained and documented, we can prepare to move on to our next steps. After leaving the patient's bedside, perform hand hygiene. Clean and disinfect the tray or trolley for the equipment to avoid cross-contamination. As mentioned earlier, to see a complete list of necessary equipment, refer to 10.5 urinary catheterizations in the nursing manual of procedures. But here are a few key items to remember. First, urinary catheters are a one-time, single-patient use to prevent cross-contamination and catheter-associated urinary tract infections. Urinary catheter size is based upon the diameter of the tube. So for example, we can have size 6, 8, 10, 12, and onward. Correct catheter size and choice is imperative to reduce the risk of urethral trauma, necrosis, and urinary leakage. Sterile lubricant sachets can be used if necessary. The catheter may be lubricated to make its insertion easier. The use of a sterile water-based lubricant or sterile water can be used. Oral sucrose solution for use in infants less than six months should be considered as an analgesia two to three minutes before the procedure. A SIMS speculum may be needed if the patient has experienced female genital mutilation. The urethral opening may be difficult to visualize in patients who have undergone FGM. The use of a SIM speculum may be used to help with visualization and insertion of the urinary catheter. We will now walk through the steps of inserting a urinary catheter. Most are the same for all patients, but there are some differences for male and female patients. Therefore, we will walk through the steps and show you the different gender-specific methods. First, we start by performing hand hygiene. Because we are about to begin a procedure, we bring the trolley or the tray to the patient's bedside and position the waste bin so the waste is not moved across the aseptic field. Place the sterilized drape on the top shelf of the dry trolley. Using an aseptic non-touch technique, also known as ANTT, prepare the appropriate amount of sterile water for injection to be injected into the balloon with a needle and syringe. Then prepare all other equipment using ANTT. Perform hand hygiene. Assess the risk of exposure and adapt PPE accordingly. Personal protective equipment could include the use of an apron to protect the healthcare provider from spraying or splashing of blood and other body fluids. If there is a risk of spraying or splashing to the mucosa, such as your eyes, nose, or mouth, the healthcare provider must wear protective equipment, like protective glasses and a mask. Assist patient to remove their underwear and lie in a supine position in the bed. Position a towel or a draw sheet under the patient's buttocks. For female patients, have the patients bend their knees, hips flexed, and feet resting about 60 centimeters apart. For male patients, the legs can be extended on the bed. Using a non-touch technique, Apply aseptic field drapes over the genitals and between the legs. Perform hand hygiene. Don sterile gloves. Open the plastic protective wrapping of the catheter 
and dip the tip into the small amount of sterile water or water-based lubricant. Place the catheter inside the sterile kidney basin for female patients with the non-dominant hand. Spread the labia minora so that the urethromeatus is visualized. This hand will remain here throughout the rest of the procedure. For male patients, with the non-dominant hand, lift the penis at a 60 to 90 degree angle and retract the foreskin. This hand will remain here throughout the rest of the procedure. Using a non-touch technique, use the dominant hand to disinfect the insertion site with the appropriate aseptic and sterile gauze. If available, use sterile forceps. Place the end of the catheter inside the sterile kidney dish and place a sterile kidney dish between the patient's legs. For female patients, using the dominant hand, introduce the tip of the catheter into the urethra in an upward and backward direction. Advance the catheter until urine drains and then advance another six to eight centimeters. For male patients, with the non-dominant hand holding the penis firm at a 60 to 90 degree angle, insert the tip of the catheter into the urethra and slowly advance the catheter with the dominant hand. Once urine flows, advance the catheter until bifurcation. If resistance is felt at the external sphincter, pause for 10 to 20 seconds and instruct the patient to breathe deeply and evenly. Increase the traction on the penis slightly and apply steady, gentle pressure on the catheter while the patient exhales or coughs. If no urine flows or resistance is still felt, stop the procedure. Remove the catheter and discard. Reattempt with a new sterile catheter. Ensure that the gland's penis is clean and dry and that the foreskin has been repositioned. For both male and female patients, if the catheter is to be indwelling, once the urine has flowed and the catheter has been advanced, inflate the balloon using a non-touch technique with the recommended amount of sterile water for injection. Withdraw the catheter slightly and use the non-touch technique to connect the drainage bag to the catheter. Secure the catheter in place by taping it to the patient's inner thigh or by using a securing device. Hang the catheter bag below the level of the patient's bladder with a fixation hook. Post-procedure. The following steps should be followed to ensure infection control practices are maintained. Remove the towel or draw sheet that was placed under the patient's buttocks. Assist the patient to replace their underwear or the gown over their genitals and ensure that the bed linens are not soiled. Ensure the skin is dry and clean. Ensure waste is disposed of according to local procedures. Doff sterile gloves and PPE, discard single-use items, and perform hand hygiene. Before discarding the urine, note the quality and quantity of the urine that was drained. The COCA, C-O-Q-A, assessment tool can be used to consider the color, odor, quality, and aspect of the urine. Clean and disinfect the trolley or tray. Perform hand hygiene. Lastly, we must ensure that we document the procedure. Documentation is an essential component of patient care to ensure that accurate records of all investigations, procedures, and assessments are maintained. If a patient is hospitalized, the following information should be documented clearly and accurately in the patient's notes. The date and time of insertion, the type and size of catheter used, any difficulties during the insertion, quality and quantity of urine drained, the amount of sterile water used in the balloon for inflation, how the tube was secured and where, the name of the nurse or clinician who performed the procedure. Congratulations. You have now completed a urinary catheterization procedure. If you need further clarification, please refer to 10.5 Urinary Catheterization in the Nursing Care Manual of Procedures. Additionally, 
Do not hesitate to contact your supervisor, the medical or technical reference, or the training team. Thank you.